Hi everyone and welcome to another YouTube video here on the Miriam Pianos channel. Today is going to be a bit of a different video because we are not in front of a digital piano per se. We are definitely not in front of an acoustic piano. We're in front of a virtual piano and in this case we are going to be taking a look at Pianotech's new Pianotech 7. Um, Modart is actually the company that builds it. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, and that's a follow-up to Pianotech 6, which really was a major breakthrough version for them. So in this video, we are going to be talking about a virtual piano. We're going to be comparing 6 and 7, as well as talking about the critical features of this plugin. Uh, if you are brand new to VST instruments, uh, this is an area of ever-expanding technology and options in the world of music making. Um, and it basically allows to you to use your computer uh, digital audio workstation as kind of a home base for these different modules of piano technology. And they all work a little bit differently. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Thank you so much for joining us on the channel. If it's the first time that you have seen us on YouTube, we would really appreciate it if you subscribe, especially if you enjoy what you see and you find it helpful. So let's get started with this right away. So I'll explain what we have set up here uh, just so that everybody is on the same page. I have a Pianotech 6 plugin and a Pianotech 7 plugin on two separate tracks. We are going to be recording them simultaneously as I go through and manipulate both of them. Otherwise, there are absolutely no effects on the uh, DAW whatsoever. Uh, there are no reverbs, there's no EQs, anything. So what you are hearing is just the absolute pure audio output from the plugin itself. Uh, for people who are completely new to this world, VST actually stands for Virtual Studio Technology. Uh, it's not that new. Uh, VSTs have been out for quite some time, but the complexity and the intensity of the VSTs is only increasing over time. And especially with the advent of the latest generation of processors, uh, these have only become uh, more and more sophisticated in terms of what they can produce. And Pianotech is unique in that it is not a sample-based virtual piano. This is actually a modeling-based virtual piano. And so in that regard, it's very similar to, say, Kawai's uh, digital piano engines that they put on their Novus series or Roland's uh, you know, V piano engines uh, that have wound up on some of their most recent LX and the very highest FP series, for example. So it's not using a recording of a piano. It's actually using a computer model, an algorithm that takes into account a wide range of features and parameters uh, and aggregates it together into a sound that we hear. Now there's a few things about Pianotech that I really love as a piano player. Um, and I should also uh, point out that we are not endorsed by Pianotech. Uh, Pianotech has not asked us to do this video, nor have they had any input whatsoever into what we are saying about this video. So this is just our opinion alone, nothing more, nothing less. A couple of things I really like about these plugins. For one, as an acoustic piano player, this allows you to understand the various components of acoustic piano, I think, better than almost any other piece of software or tool out there. And I'm gonna show you why. If we take a look at the interface and how they've laid this out, um, it's got a, a bit of an older aesthetic to it. It doesn't feel like it's 2021 in terms of graphic design, but it's still relatively well laid out. And with a few minutes of fiddling around, uh, you can find it with one exception. Um, you'll see down here uh, with this output um, where it says sound recording and this tiny little icon where you can view and modify the microphones. This is one of the most interesting modules on the entire plugin and it took me like 15, 20 minutes to try and find that silly little microphone button. Once you click it, you're into this whole world of simulated mic placement, uh, microphone type. It's awesome. It's cool. I fiddle around with this stuff for hours. So it would be nice if it had a little bit more of an indication than that tiny little mic, but that's about my only uh, functional complaint with uh, the UI here on Pianotech. So let's talk about the types of parameters that you can actually manipulate within these VSTs. 
they've got three, uh, you know, obviously uh, divided up here, tuning, voicing, and design. So let's talk about first uh, tuning. Sounds pretty obvious, but there's a couple of things you may not have ever considered. One of them is that uh, unison width is not, uh, it's not a black or white thing. You don't have a situation where strings are either completely in unison or they're completely out of unison. And just so that you can hear what that sounds like, here is a unison width of zero. In other words, it's simulating that all three of those steel strings on the top two thirds of the piano are perfectly in tune. And this is what that sounds like. Sounds pretty enough. Let's go to the other extreme. Here's what a unison width of, well, they have 20 as the maximum parameter. What does that sound like? Well, it sounds like a honky-tonk piano. And we associate honky-tonk pianos with out-of-unison strings because, of course, uh, old saloon pianos very rarely got tuned. And so those unisons were almost never unified. They were never in sync. Uh, and so that's why we have this permanent association in our minds with an old saloon piano with these three strings that aren't in unison. Uh, but really, that's all it is. What most people don't realize is that a really great piano tuning and piano tuner doesn't necessarily want to have all three of those strings exactly the same. There's a very, 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 very subtle difference between one, two, and three strings. And what that does is it actually adds a bit of warmth, it adds a little bit of projection to the sound. And so this is the difference between it sounding uh, with a unison width of one, versus none at all. So it actually gets a bit quieter and it sounds a little bit thinner. So not only does the plugin allow you to manipulate that, but in a way it kind of teaches you, as I said, how acoustic pianos work and how piano technicians and piano builders kind of think when they're putting all of these things together. Octave stretching is the same, uh, and they kind of give you these hints, which is kind of cool as well. Octave stretching refers to um, tuning technique where you actually start to spread the distance between octaves out slightly as you get closer to the extremities uh, of the piano. And then you've got temperament equal, and you've got uh, what's considered you know, A440 or 441. Um, Tuning is a complete art and science unto itself and it really can change the character of the sound. I really like that they make it so easy to manipulate some of these things um, on the plugin. Voicing, again, uh, you know, if tuning has an effect on character, voicing has an even greater effect on character. And so for acoustic piano players out there who've always sort of wondered exactly what voicing is, you know, because your, maybe your teacher or something out there said, oh, you know, you might want to ask your technician next time he's by to voice your piano. And you don't really know what that means. You don't know uh, how expensive it is. You don't know whether it's actually really necessary. Is it just one of those things where you've rolled through the quick change, uh, you know, lube place and they're trying to sell you some unneeded services. Uh, well, here's what voicing is. It is the art and science of affecting the tensions and uh, densities of the hammer at different points in the hammer and at different compression rates of the hammer. And so this is where you get into uh, needling techniques. It's also where you get into you know, the value of under felting as well, because all of this really has an effect on controlling how hard the hammer is as it hits the string at a slow velocity, a medium velocity, or a high velocity. 
and you generally want a pretty even curve between that. So the harder you hit the hammer, the harder the hammer compresses and it kind of creates a slightly more um, a strident, slightly more metallic sound, uh, the harder it's hit and you want this nice soft hammer, the softer it's hit. Well, that's not, you know, easier said than done. That's hundreds of years of experimenting with creating hammers, the weight of the hammers, and also the concert technicians who have uh, really refined the craft of needling those hammers uh, so that you can affect exactly how that hammer uh, sort of cushions itself or not as it hits the string. You even have the ability to affect uh, the spectrum profile and so what that refers to is the eight overtones uh, that you get off of, well there's actually an unlimited number of overtones, but generally they only talk about the first six, seven, or eight overtones um, for every fundamental note uh, that you hit and the ability to emphasize or de-emphasize certain um, uh, harmonics there, which also can change the character of the so sound. You've got hammer noise, strike point, soft pedal. The design really gets into uh, sort of the soundboard shaping and um, uh, the thickness of the soundboard and the dryness of the soundboard, how responsive it is uh, to energy input. You've got duplex scale, sympathetic resonance, uh, like virtually everything that you could possibly hope to manipulate on a piano is right here. Action. You've got an EQ and then you've got an effects engine right in here as well, which has nothing to do with the uh, piano mechanism itself or the, the instrument itself, but really this is all kind of post-processing. So let's have a listen to what this sounds like. One of the things that I uh, like as well about this plugin is the sheer number of presets that are available on it. And besides presets, there's also these instrument packs. So it isn't one engine that has all of these different factors. There's a core algorithmic code that simulates a number of different instruments that you probably would recognize. And you can see them here uh, in these various lists. So we have a grand uh, a Steinway D from New York, a Steinway D from Hamburg, we have, uh, you know, the mighty uh, Bechstein D282. Uh, we have an upright U4. And then you can see through this list over here, there's a pretty wide range of other instruments that they make available uh, for this plugin. My favorite have been the ones that I've got here. And so that's the ones we're going to be sampling. Uh, so let's first take a listen to a New York D. Um, now, the Presets allow you to jump in and find something you like right away without really having to muck around with an intimidating number of settings because everything we just went through is a pretty intimidating number of settings. So let's have a listen to this. First, let's hear the D prelude. So it's got a bit more of a mellow attack. I can see here that they've got some hammer hardness that's a little softer across the whole spectrum than you'd be used to. It's also a, a bit of a narrower sound, noticing that their octave stretching is turned down a little bit. Here over on classical, and you can see now the voicing has changed a little bit. jazz.
pop. So just a huge number of options that manipulate every single setting in here. So spend the time, find one you really like, and then you can start playing around. Way more fun than feeling like you have to understand every single setting right off the bat. Let's listen now to the difference between six and seven, because for people out there who already have six, six was great. Um, is seven worth it? Is there actually any meaningful difference here? Well, we're gonna get exactly the same model up, listen to it side by side, and you tell me. So if you look at the two settings between six and seven, we have seven on the left, we have six on the right, I don't see any difference whatsoever. one little dip right there. So let's get rid of that so that we don't have any difference whatsoever. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So here is six first. in a seven. just so much more depth to that tone. So in that one particular instance, actually hearing a pretty significant difference between six and seven. Let's try the Beckstein. So same thing, here's six. So to my ear, what may actually be happening is rather than a change in the underlying architecture of the plugin itself, we may have updates to specific instrument packs which are making the difference here. Uh, so uh, if there are any um, changes to the architecture of the, of the plugin in terms of maybe the efficiency or the fidelity it's putting out, um, we're listening to this at 48 kilohertz. Um, I'm not hearing it as a major difference when I'm listening to certain 
comparisons between the Beckstein, which I'm not aware they made any changes. There were some reports that there had been some updates to the to the Steinway uh, engine or the Steinway instrument pack. And so there has definitely been some new uh, kind of tonal areas that have been unlocked. It's just you can hear it. It's such an obvious difference. Um, the interface between the two appears to be exactly the same. Um, let's also then just have a quick listen to the U4. And let's just go U4 recording. And listen to this. Big difference there. So it does seem to be instrument pack specific, but man oh man, if you you know pick and choose exactly what you're using with 7, there is some more depth. It does seem like it's a more sophisticated algorithm that they're using because there are, are uh, there's a lot more surrounding the attack of the note uh, on 7, especially uh, with those two examples that we've just listened to. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at Pianotech. Very interesting plugin. Using modeling, not sampling, makes it pretty unique uh, in the marketplace. Uh, and the difference between uh, Piano Tech 6 and 7, pretty subtle depending on how you're using it and what instrument packs. If it's down to the instrument pack, you're looking for some of those updated uh, Steinway models, for example, and there may be some more differences that I can get into if I really grill through uh, those the Beckstein uh, that's really what it's going to come down to. But luckily, Pianotech isn't charging an arm and a leg for the upgrade. So if you already have the six and you find yourself using uh, you know, some of those uh, instrument packs very frequently, I'd suggest it's probably worth it to go for the upgrade. And if this is the first time you've even heard about Pianotech, well, I hope you know a little bit more about it. Possibly uh, piqued your interest and you might go and do a bit of investigating on your own. Thanks so much for watching. If it is the first time to the channel and you've enjoyed what you've heard and seen, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you back as a viewer for future videos. We are always putting them up. Thanks so much and have yourself a great day.